Uh, let's talk names here because there are so many to get through. We're going to just start with the big three, Patrick. No surprises here. How about Scotty Scheffler? Brand new dad, winner of his last two, four of his last five, refuses to finish outside the top, I don't know, 10, 15, 17, something in that realm. And is Scotty as a daddy? Is as a, as a daddy now? Is he is he still unstoppable? Daddy Scheffler mm -hmm. is he going to go dummy this week? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think if there's ever a week to get Scotty Scheffler, you would think it is. But I mean, he's just so much better than the rest of the world at the moment. I think the Rory McIlroy run that he's gone on over this last month. Greg and I were talking about this on HQ, where it might have muddied the perception for some people, but. Rick, you go back since the beginning of February, the gap between Scotty Scheffler and Rory McIlroy, tr true strokes gained, which takes into account field strength, is the same between Rory McIlroy and Luke List. That's how good Scotty Scheffler has been, and I don't think everyone has forgotten about it. I hope the majority and everyone has remembered it. But I think just the absence of him, not him not playing in a signature event like Quail Hollow, I think can probably let people forget just a little bit, but he's so good. And then you throw in, I guess, the extracurriculars or the question marks that aren't around his game, but everything else, right? The, the new dad, does he have the nappy factor or he's a little tired? He said he played plenty uh, while he was away from the PGA Tour up until kind of last week uh, to hang out with the kid. You have Teddy Scott not caddying on Saturday. He won't be there for round three. He's going home to attend his son's high school graduation. He's got the tour chaplain on the bag, Brad Payne. So does that play any sort of factor? Ted Scott will be back Sunday. And then uh, Greg brought this up in the DFS show. You know, Scotty Scheffler missed the cut at the 2022 PGA championship as well, following his master's win. So if you want an angle, if you want to play the narratives, you could probably find a path in, but uh, yes, he is. He, he's still dominant. He also won the RBC heritage after his master's win this time around. Okay. 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 <laughs> it does feel, it does feel a hair. I'm just, I'm just giving all the, inf we're giving all the information out to people. Uh, Greg, you essentially gave Scotty Scheffler a second leg of the triple crown or of the, uh, of the I'm thinking I'm, I'm in Kentucky. I'm thinking horses of the grand slam on Sunday night. Would you, would you like to change your mind or are you continuing to roll with this? No, I'm continuing to roll with this. I mean, think about what you, what everybody said about this golf course. It's driver heavy. Okay. Well, Scotty's long enough and more accurate than anybody else near the top of the game. So he's going to be playing. He's going to be able to hit driver and play from the fairway. Um, what's the next shot look like? A lot of seven to five irons. Oh, okay. Well, um, who's the best at that? Well, Scotty Scheffler. And who's the best at doing it over and over again? Oh, well, Scotty Scheffler. Who, there, there's no one who has been as solid, as consistent, as steady in their execution as Scotty Scheffler. And like that, that includes Tiger Woods, you know, I mean, Tiger had to get a little, he had to go dummy with the short game and put in a lot more <laughs> often than Scotty Scheffler does. So yeah, I, I'm not changing my mind. Okay. Well, Scotty's coming in with a two consecutive tournament winning streak. And so is one Rory McIlroy, a classic Wells Fargo championship, the latter in dominant fashion, Patrick lapping Xander Shoffley on Sunday and turning him into mincemeat, I believe is the word that we described it. And now he returns to the scene of his 2014 PGA championship, Rory McIlroy at Valhalla. Yeah, stuffed him, uh, stuffed him in a locker. I think it's another good way to put it as well. Seems to have everything going his way. Obviously, there's some TMZ news if you want to get into the tabloids. I don't know if we do with the uh, the announcement that him and his wife will be splitting. Everyone on the internet, they, they got all the parallels going with him and his old girlfriend, Caroline Wazanaki, who I believe is with our colleague now, J.J. Watt. Uh, you know, we, we, true. I think so. You know, 
JJ, we hang out at the company happy hours all the time. <laughs> um, it, and then you get, you bring in the two wins. This would, I mean, it'd be his third win in a row. The PJ championship was his third win in a row back in 2014. The driver's an absolute weapon at the moment. The iron play seems to have taken a nice step. And yeah, I mean, Rory McIlroy, I think the one criticism you could say throughout his career was in his late 20s up until his like early 30s. He didn't get himself in the mix enough in major championships, but he's really fixed that over these last two years, I would say. Uh, yeah, it seems like every major championship he has a chance to win, and I would be shocked if he doesn't have a chance over the weekend. Uh, Caroline Wozniacki and J.J. Watt have not been together since 2015, and Caroline Wozniacki has been married <laughs> to David Lee since 2019. So Patrick <laughs> is uh, really doing a, a, a great job here, just uh, sp spreading whatever comes into his little brain. Dang. <laughs> maybe that wasn't J.J. Watt at the company happy hour then. Maybe it was someone else. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was somebody else. Uh, Greg, I'll try to get us back on, on track here. You know, Rory is uh, – Listen, the things that you said about Scotty and how there is ways to separate yourself from the field at Valhalla are many of them are true for Rory, not maybe not all of them. Yes. Um, well, he's not as accurate off the tee, although he's been very accurate this season on the PGA Tour, which is a good sign. Like last week, he had 50% of his fairways, 51%. But at the same time, you're taking it over the corners of dog legs. Um, once you get it past the bunkers, it opens up and it, it doesn't matter if you're in the rough. It'll matter this week. I think Rory will be able to find fairways. You know, it wasn't errant tee shots that were missing the fairways. It was more of angles and things like that. The other thing is a big knock on him has been the wedge play. And uh, this golf course at 7,600 yards, par 71, doesn't really ask you to hit a whole lot of wedges. You know, on the par fives, He's going to get up around the green and two in inside of the problem area for Rory. And, and on the par fours, he's going to be outside of the problem area. And I think that bodes really well for him. The other thing that really struck me at Quail Hollow was his short game. His short game looked as reliable as I've seen in a long time. Uh, there were shots, there were times when he would miss a green. And I, I felt I found myself feeling like I knew he was going to get up and down. And he did. And he left himself a lot of stress-free pars that way. That's also a very good sign, even though with all the rough around the greens here, it will be a very different test. I, I still think his touch is in a great place. Um, and lastly, on the, on the divorce, the tabloids, divorces don't seem to happen overnight. Um, so I don't think anything that you saw at Wells Fargo that maybe swayed your opinion one way or another, I don't think this news should play any factor at all um because like i said this is probably not news to rory right that's exactly right uh the third man of that three-headed monster is one brooks kepka who is also riding a winning streak of his own except this winning streak is just one he won live golf singapore but patrick he's he's gone back to back at this event before uh, he has this ability to turn major championships into uh, runaway victories. Brooksy is feeling it again. Yeah, I think uh, Max Homa or Justin Thomas, one of them kind of touched on it, where they don't believe there's as much strategy in a PGA championship. It is who's the guy who's the best driver and the best like mid to long iron player. And Max Homa was like, oh, yeah. That's kind of like Brooks Kepka, pretty much. <laughs> and he's like, so I guess it makes kind of sense that he's won three of these. And uh, if the setup's similar to Oak Hill, where he was great those final three rounds, he kind of stumbled out the gate, but was unbelievable the final 54 holes. And you you bring in his defense before not only the PGA Championship, but also the U.S. Open as well. And just his affinity for this championship in particular, coming off the win you have to feel pretty good about him. There's probably some question marks, I would say, still. Maybe around that putter. I don't know if you want to say six rounds were enough to make you feel very good about that putter after struggling for those first three or four months of the season. So if you want to poke a hole in Brooks Kepka, it's probably that. But Brooks Kepka has a way of making people look very dumb 
come major championship weeks. And if you doubt him, he tends to make you pay. Uh, so much so the struggles with the putter, Greg, that he has, you know, tinkered with, with different flat sticks and he's seemingly made a switch to kind of a more mallet style Scotty Scheffler, uh, Scotty Cameron, as opposed to the, uh, the blade that we've normally seen him with for so many years. It's a, it's an interesting caveat. Um, I, I, and I, I will be very curious to see if it does play a role. I mean, like Patrick mentioned, it did get a little better for him, um, in the last two tournaments after the masters, um, specifically in Singapore. But I don't, I don't know if this is the real story with Brooks Kepka. It, it just feels to me like if Brooks tries, I feel like it's, it's like high school pickup game. Well, who's trying and who's not? And if Brooks is trying, he has a really good chance of contending. And it feels like he realized after the Masters that he needed to put in a little more effort. And now he has. All of a sudden, he wins. And now he goes to the major championship he's had the best success at. Uh, it's kind of incredible what he's done. I mean, I was looking at major winners since 1934, and there have been 17 title defenses um, since 1934 across all four majors. And only two people have done it more than once. Any guesses? Jack Nicholas. Incorrect. Tiger Woods. Yes, Tiger did it four times. And Brooks Kepka. Wow. And Brooks Kepka. Yeah. So Brooks did it at a PGA in a US Open. Tiger did it at the Masters in oh, oh, uh, 2001 and 2002. He did it in 99 and 2000 at the PGA and 06, 07 at the PGA. And he also did it in the Open in 05, 06. He did oh it four God. times. Jesus. Brooks could do it for a third time. Nobody else has done it twice. Which That's was kind of surprising to me.